I made a video earlier just about the bad storytelling choices they had in Ant-Man. It is absolutely the laziest writing I've ever seen. It does look like a board just kind of took a little bit of this and a little bit of this and just kind of mixed it together and said, hey, movie. <laughs> and audiences are reacting very poorly uh, to this. And we can see this in the box office numbers. This is a bad, bad sign for Disney Marvel. I think they're going to take the wrong takeaway out of this. Uh, and I'll tell you what that is in just a second. But uh, the right takeaway is something much easier, which we can get to also. I am a number one best-selling author and award-winning comic creator, so I know comic book storytelling better than almost anybody out there. My name is John Delarose. If you're new to the channel, this is my subscribe star. So if you want to support the channel, do things like this. You can, of course, get a YouTube membership. You can support my subscribe star, and you can support my books. Uh, they are on Amazon. All these links are in the description below, so you can just check things out. Um, very prolific. So I've got something for you. If you like space books, if you like superheroes, if you like uh, pretty much fantasy, anything, uh, I've got it because I try to really make sure that everybody uh, can enjoy uh, the work that I do with good and unique storytelling, unlike what they're doing with the MCU franchise at this point. So check that out. Support the alternative to media. Yeah, that's in the description below. Thank you guys for doing so. All right, the story of the day today is after Ant-Man 3's second weekend box collapse, should Marvel get concerned? This is absolutely crazy. You look at the box office for Ant-Man 3, as it says right here, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania uh, took a sizable hit to its sophomore outing at the box office. They call this the sophomore outing, and they call it Ant-Man 3 right here. By the way, like, I don't know who writes these. Was this a variety? Uh, editor, bro, whoever's editing this. <laughs> Please, like, sophomore 3... I, I get that it's Ant-Man and the Wasp 2, technically, but it is the third movie in this. So, And here it is, third movie starring Paul Rudd. Uh, come on. This is this is just like confusing writing. All right, never mind. I, I'm digressing. It's not the point here. Took a 69% uh, box office hit from its $105 million debut, the second biggest weekend drop in franchise's history. That's MCU franchise's history. Holy crap. That is a huge drop-off, guys. Usually, uh, you don't see something this big unless a film really is going to tank. This That falls amongst plenty of debate among analysts and experts. Is the film's performance a blip or an infection point for the Hollywood's biggest properties? The answer is likely somewhere to between, according to senior uh, ComScore uh, analysts, whatever. A second week drop goes. Anything in the 70% realm is pretty significant. Movies that open with over $100 million are generally front-loaded, but in some cases, the bigger they are, the harder they fall comes into play. So here it is, the second weekend turnout of 30, only $32 million, not encouraging for the franchise. Ant-Man 3 had a big start with a $100 million debut, uh, which is the biggest opening weekend for uh, the trilogy, which, of course, everybody who was fans wanted to go see that. But, of course, it dropped off real hard. And it dropped off real hard because people saw that this really was not a great movie. There wasn't something, like, exciting about it. Uh, you know, I've, I've already talked about what happened on this, but this is the problem. Uh, Marvel is setting up all these movies. The, the problem is all these movies are just setups for other movies at this point. They're not actually movies that stand on their own. If you look at the old Iron Man movie, the original, you know, the Thor movie back in the day, the old Spider-Man movies, they were movies for themselves. These are all just setups for whatever they're coming up with for the next thing. Uh, and then, you know, you get that after credit and you're supposed to be excited for the next thing, buy product, don't like it, consume product, consume more product, get more product, get more product. And that's the entire, like, purpose of these films at this point. They don't actually stand on their own like they used to. And that's the main problem that Disney's starting to have. Now, Disney's not going to take uh, this into consideration. What they're going to see, all this, they're going to go, there's superhero film fatigue. Yeah, that's true, because you've been making bad superhero films over the last couple of years. It's not like you're still making good films like we used to enjoy back in the day. Now everything is about setting up not only the next films, but setting up the next replacement characters. So you see this movie is really about like pushing Cassie Lang as this new like ant girl uh, to replace Paul Rudd uh, as they go forward with these franchises. You see that what they're setting up uh, in this like sort of new uh mcu sort of deal you got ms marvel you got this you got she hulk you got you know uh everybody's a female replacement character uh for the original characters and uh even even, with, even black panther right uh, <laughs> and they're gonna have this like like yeah, yeah female ghostbusters version of the avengers coming up soon i you know i it's not it's not out there yet guys but this is what's coming they're trying to set that up nobody likes it everybody likes the actors like paul rudd uh, I mean, he's actually a likable kind of guy who you kind of want to watch. But the the new gal, I mean, there's just nothing interesting about her. She's a girl. Yay. 
girl power. And that's what Disney is missing. Like, these are sort of male action-centric movies, and they're trying to just, like, force a female audience onto it while, while trying to make a male-dominated kind of setup. It just doesn't work, and what happens is people get fatigued by that, and they tune out after a while. Very simple stuff. Like I said, I don't think Disney's going to take that out of it. They're just going to take that uh, people don't like superhero movies. We've done too many of them, and they're going to dial back the amount of movies that they have. Uh, that's going to be the takeaway probably from the company that as they don't want to actually self-reflect on the fact that they're making movies that people don't want to watch. But that's what they always do with these companies. All right. Leave a comment down below with what you think about this. Hit that like and subscribe button, and we'll be back soon.